Okay, good evening. I'd like to call to order the Monday, October 16th, regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. To my left is Flo Smith. Good evening. To my far left is Joe Staub. To my right is Tour Nelson. I'm Brad Town. Um, Additions or changes to the agenda tour? I do have one, a right-of-way permit for Addison Drive. Okay. And uh, public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Treasurer's report, budget status? Um, does everybody have a copy of the budget status report? Okay, okay so I just want to go over, I went over it last month, but now I've updated it. This does not include the, uh, the payables from tonight. Okay, so it's right before that time. Um, and so there wasn't really much change in here. However, I was looking at, uh, on page one, as far as uh, the licenses and the fees. Uh, right now, we should be at like 25% in the actual budget okay, column. Uh, and we're at like 23% as far as town clerk. And I don't know if we're gonna meet our budget on that or not. I am seeing a lot less traffic in the vault. And we do have people that are coming in electronically, but still we don't have many places for sale here. So I got the feeling that we're not going to be making the full 40,000 we're anticipating, just to give you a word, but you never know. I mean, something could happen and it could change. Um, and then on that same page, pilot revenue. Um, I'm still looking for Blue Cross Blue Shield for the stipend they give us. I sent out a bill to them last month and I sent out a second bill last week. So, because they're the only one that hasn't paid yet. And I just want to make you aware I'm anticipating they should, but I don't know. I know there's some changes going on there, but I don't think that should be a change for us, but that's the only one I'm waiting for. Okay, and there's no other big change in the next few pages. On page four, there's a few other things. At the very top, uh, ambulance service, I've contacted Barry Town because they have not sent us any invoices for the year. At this point, we're four months behind, and they contacted me today and said they will be sending out the invoices. Uh, in that 131,000 budget, 121,000 of this very time. The rest is normal. So uh, in November, we'll probably have four or five payments. So that will come into where it should be. Uh, and the next section down under town offices, uh, the admin advertising is up, and a lot of that is because we're advertising for a treasurer, an assistant treasurer. Let's see. And then under maintenance, that at this point is like 45% of the budget. However, the mowing is done for the season. So I think that, that will you won't be seeing any more mowing bills for a few months. So come December or probably by January, that should be you know at the level that it should be at for the year. Uh, and then general expenses under the tax refunds and abatements. Of course, we've had uh, a lot of abatement hearings, and so right now it's fourteen thousand that we have to, you know, that we've written off. And I think there still might be more work related meetings in regards to the flood. Okay, and then in the next column down, the police services. Uh, the overtime is up, and we know that you know, we still I think we still might have one person out on family leave. And I think the one that was on a workers comp, I think he's coming back either this week or next week. So I think that we should be having full staff, hopefully by the beginning of November. So then the overtime should be coming down. And then on the next page, page five, under media and data, uh, that expense is higher. It's over budget already. However, we've had a lot of issues with the police server. And their server has to communicate with the state of Vermont, and it has not been working right. And I know that our uh, company, RB Tech, is still working on it, trying to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. I don't know how much longer that's going to take. And then lower on that page under Summer Roads, I'm looking at the wages for Summer Roads and overtime right now. All of that really is flood related, basically. There's very, very little of it that's not, and especially all the overtime, especially, is definitely flood related. And then on page six, uh, highway equipment and structures. If you, we bought a highway truck. You saw that that check, I sent that check out last week and they do have their new truck. And I do believe a lot of that is in the reserves, but we can't take out the reserves until the end of FY24. So that, that amount will be in there for the whole year. 
and then it's not showing in here on this statement. However, we did get a new police vehicle, and I put that, that's also in the payables. So that one's there. And that's all the changes that I had for, for the update. Thank you so much for the overview, Diane. Oh, and just one more thing as far as the flood. So far, we spent about 717000 and that's without the wages. Okay. Any questions for Diane? I don't have any. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. Uh, tax sales discuss authorization of town bid. I don't know when the last time we had a tax sale come up, so I might be going over this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> over the elementary for what you need, um, but I, mean, I don't think I don't know if we ever had a tax sale actually go through and I was previously on the select board so it doesn't come up that often it was but before COVID the last one okay um, but we do have three tax sales coming up on the 25th yeah, and what you may not realize is that we as a town or a select board uh, under state statute can put in a bid on these properties if no other bids have come in um, it might be property that we want for town business to move for town hall or something to, or it might be more of a speculative nature that, you know, we might throw in a bid hoping that, you know, we can sell it in the future at an easier process than having to go through the entire um, tax sale process. Um, but whatever the reasons, we do have some options here. Um, and I threw in the, um, you know, the statute and our policy uh, describing that. Um, we are in no way obligated to, to or required to put in a bid on any of these three properties. And in fact, I would make the recommendation that we do not enter a bid on any of these properties, but wanted to give you information so that you can make an informed decision which way you want it to go. I don't know that we need a motion not to enter a bid. I think we can just let it go. But you have those three properties? They're not listed in our packet though, right? Yeah, they should be. Should be all included in the. Uh... I think this is one, the first one. Yeah. It's just a few pages down in this one underneath okay. the statute. Diane, of these three, how many are actual properties as real estate? One. Okay. So that's the one on, was it, I can't remember the road name now. Neil Road? Neil, Neil Road. Neil, yeah. And the other two are structures? The other two are mobile homes. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anything else on this? Hearing nothing. Uh, so the auction, the uh, bidding takes on the 25th of October? Okay. And I am here at the time. Okay. Uh, Amtrak visit and letter of support tour. Um, so Tom and I met with uh, representatives from Amtrak uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, they're at our station in Berlin. And um, we had to interrupt the safety briefing to let them know they were, in fact, in Berlin at the time. Um, 
it's just a little meet and greet type thing. They're doing some uh, renovations of the loading platform there. Um, but they did, uh, re you know, ask us for a letter of support, which I included for their for their budget proposal, which I have included uh, the draft in your packet uh, tonight. I've already talked to the Economic Development Council, and they're in favor of uh, uh, sending it out. Um, and they said they will uh, change the signs on the station at and now say Montpelier Barry to Montpelier Berlin. So I was happy with that. Okay. I was going to ask if they've changed the signs if we sign it. <laughs> it's, I, I think they're going to change the signs regardless. <laughs> It was bad enough that it said Montpelier, but then when I saw it said Barry, I about blew a gasket with them. So, <laughs> a little sensitive to that. You could have it alphabetical, <laughs> Berlin slash yeah. Montpelier. So, I will be sending this out in the next couple of days. Okay. Thank you, Tour. Anything else on the Amtrak? Nope. Uh, there's a uh, little lit literature going around that they uh, left with us. Well, on that, on the uh, letter of support, uh, a motion to uh, go over the letter of support? I make the motion to move forward with the letter of support regarding Amtrak as presented to us this evening. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District Host Town Agreement Draft. So we have uh, Dan Casey and Throne Lay Sleeper with us again. Um, we've, I know they were here a couple weeks ago talking about uh, property on Granger Road they were interested in, and we've been meeting with them, uh, reviewing the draft of the host town agreement that uh, we think we have about ready to go. Um, copies included in your packet tonight. Um, basically, we're looking to limit in some areas what they will, or at least formally limit what they will um, uh, accommodate their, their uh, depot. Uh, it will not include a commercial composting facility, uh, limit some of the other items, they will not deal with uh, any class one explosive materials, small arms, ammunition, fireworks, uh, anything like that. Uh, they will not deal with uh, poisonous gas, uh, dangerous when wet materials, uh, poisonous solids that have an inhalation hazard, and radioactive materials except for your household um, smoke alarms and other things, carbon monoxide mm -hmm. uh, detectors, which usually contain a small source. A lot of times it's americium. Um, those would be allowed because we do want responsible um, recycling uh, and treatment of those uh, materials. Um, Everything is going to be handled and stored in, the, in accordance with EPA uh, limits. Um, and uh, the management district uh, will abide by the town zoning and land use regulations. So they are preparing their application for the uh, DRB board, yeah, uh, Development Review Board. Do you have an idea when that's going to be submitted yet? or? <coughs> Well, that's going to be Western Samson doing that. Okay. Uh, so they're doing that. Okay. <laughs> so we're hoping to have contract from them for the remainder of the project, which will include that application process. Okay. So we're going to have to wait until the application process, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things. They do agree to a pilot. Um, and then they will waive the per capita assessment to the town 
uh, during the time thanks of the agreement. Um, that's mainly the big changes. So I think, unless you have concerns about this, I'm ready to send this to the attorney to have him take a look at it. And uh, any update on your guys' side? Uh, have you approached your board with it yet? Or? Uh, the, uh, the next board, full board meeting is the first week of next month. So they haven't seen the latest um, draft of this. We're not anticipating that they're going to be any issues with it. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll take a look and I think it's the first Tuesday of the year. Uh, first, first Wednesday. First Wednesday of the first. Question. Well, actually, first state statement is when you guys were down in Paris City and the state of Vermont sh showed up and asked what did you have on site and you were able to give them the, the list of, of materials within minutes of being asked. Thank you very much. Huh? That, that makes me feel very easy about you coming to town. Um, and I was very happy to see the trained personnel that you're going to have up there to handle this and you have containment systems for the material of which is going to be stored there as well as you have a, a plan for you know the, the whole the transition if you want to call it. You do have other maybe uh, equipment that may not be listed in this agreement um, you know booms and, and shields of some sort. Do we have any uh, drainage uh, DI's up there on site? You mean um Drainage inlets. Drainage from the, um, from the exterior of the property or yeah. the inside? Not from the inside, from the outside. Um, so if there was a, you know, a spill that got, you know, that got away from you, mm -hmm. you, you do have maybe equipment in place to, to throw out, to collect. So we have spill protocols. And we okay. Have, um, well, we usually use uh, some absorbent barriers. Yeah. Um, However, I will say that, that everything is going to be taken in under cover on an impermeable surface on concrete. Uh, so there shouldn't be any anything, you know, unless, I don't know, a car crashes and tanks rupture or something like that. In which case, we'd use that absorbent material. Uh, well, I was thinking, yeah, more on the lines of a large amount being transferred to a truck to be hauled off site. Mm -hmm. So it's not like what could happen today or tomorrow, but just down the road when we do that transfer. I don't think there are any drainage inlets there. I can't recall. But we, yeah. part of, the, part of the, the permitting process will be a survey. We're also planning to do an underground survey to find the sewer and water lines. So we will be able to report on that once we get a little further. Down okay. the Thank you. I'm good. Now, were you folks going to do any soil testing before? Let's see, uh, recommendation. Western and Samson is recommending that we do. Get a baseline? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I understand that it was, there was a previous uh, spill there while it was a truck stop. Uh, yeah. So we'll do an environmental assessment for that. Okay, any questions for these folks? Yeah. Very good. Um, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you for you. your thoughtful yeah. response. <clears throat> and next, there was to be a discussion on uh, replacement of the town office furnace. Uh, I was talking with Mr. Well, from well, the Gillespie's there, Steve, and um, he had. Uh, they had done the service work up here, and he was he mentioned that it might be time to replace the furnace. Now, I don't know what the board's feelings are on that, and I don't even know how much is in the uh, town hall budget for uh, building maintenance. Uh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Good evening. No, I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> Okay, 
So in maintenance, we have $12,000 budgeted, and so far we have spent about $6,000. Okay. Uh, and we don't have anything really in reserves, although we do have some capital reserves, so we have to, you know, could certainly use some of that. What is the year of the current furnace? Age? I'm not sure. Mm. Just really old. Mm. So we are not necessarily, we don't necessarily have an issue with it, do we? Not right now. Okay. Yeah. The, what Mr. What the Steve was saying was that uh, um, if you look back, historically, we have had, we have spent a lot of money on it, and it's getting up in age enough that he mentioned it to me. So whether you want to or not is, I mean, you can look into it a little bit more. Um, but it was just, I told him I'd bring it up to the select board. Mm -hmm. Did he give an estimation of what he thought it would cost That'd to nice. replace? No. You're going to be well over 10 grand. I would say, yeah. yeah. Um, and and I, would, I would suggest that we, we budget it for next year, if that's what the board wants to do. Um, do. Do we get it inspected? We just get it serviced. I think we just have it serviced. Okay. Um, However, it might be a uh, might do a little digging and see just what the age of that thing is. Mm -hmm. I think at some point it was replaced once. Yeah, I know it not in the last ten years since I've been here. We've had the same furnace. But. Yeah, but I I think years and years ago it was replaced because it uh, I think the the uh, I think uh, the fire chamber. Uh, got uh, compromised and started to leak. Then I think also there was one, was there one time that the door somehow got opened? Yeah. And it, and did it, it freeze? It yeah. froze, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, might be well worth looking into. Mm -hmm. So, but I just told him I'd bring it up and now we have a, we can budget for it. This. So I know a facility down the road that we have it inspected and serviced and such. Um, I'm also being, it's 33 years old and th there, are, there are some people that are talking about the age and getting a little nervous about it. Um, but during the inspection and the servicing, I'm being told that you're not going to replace it with something that's going to be as efficient. Okay. And, and there was, there's nothing wrong with, with that one. Yeah. So that's why I asked if you had it inspected, yeah. or is it just going off somebody who's saying it's, it's just old? Well, because we'd replace this whole board right now if we're talking about just old. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> I think what he was referring to is some of the uh, some of the uh, monies we've spent on that furnace. Okay. Fair enough. As far as work goes, um, another concern is the older the furnaces get, sometimes you cannot get. Um, they don't support them anymore. Parts. True. Parts become scarce. That's why we ended up getting rid of the one across the that house we owned. Oil or gas? Oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. But anyway, I just thought I'd, I told him I'd bring it up, so I did. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. Okay. Diane. Um, Diane, so we're currently about halfway through, 50% of our $12,000. $12, mm -hmm. Do we typically use that up? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because we typically, we typically, typically put money into our furnace every year. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's, it could be 500 some years, but other years it's three or four thousand. Mm -hmm. But we do put money into it every year, and they normally come to it three times a year. And I think even they they inspected it, but I, I can't be certain were they just servicing it or were they actually so typically every year we put in 500 to something greater yes. okay did you replace it <laughs> when you get it budgeted yeah <laughs> well that's why I said I'd bring it up okay anything else on this if not we'll move to FEMA mitigation program potential buyouts so, uh, as a result of the floods, uh, the state uh, has looked for expressions of interest 
uh, people who were damaged and would be interested in having their properties bought out by the state. Uh, we did this about 10 years ago after Irene. Uh, that's how we got the Friendship Park. They're off of uh, Muzzy Road. In Route 12, uh, basically FEMA buys out the property, or they give us the money, we buy out the property, the town becomes the owner of the property. Uh, we remove any structures on there, and then um, in perpetuity, it, it has to be some type of uh, green space or open space or something like that. We can't ever build any type of a permanent structure on there. Um, two, um, and this is all on a, outside of the mobile home buyouts. That's a different program. Uh, there are two properties that have expressed an interest in these uh, buyouts. Um, one is on 1026 Junction Road, the Fair property, uh, mobile home on, on two acres. Um, they came before the Board of Abatement last week. And the other one is M's RV on uh, Route 12, and they also came before the uh, Board of Abatement last week. They've both uh, expressed an interest in the uh, buyout and um, reiterated uh, that interest, or at least keeping their options open last week. Um, so um, if the town wants to pursue this, um, we got two potential projects there uh, to move ahead with. Mm -hmm. So, M's RVs, they want to take and go through the, they want to have the town buy them out. I, I think, I mean, I, I'm, you know, trying to figure out what they're looking to do, but I, I think they're interested in keeping their options open mm -hmm. at this point. Um, okay. I mean, they're, you know, they're looking to, they had one building that was uh, clearly destroyed and would need to be replaced. And if replaced, would need to um, be raised above the uh, base flood elevation. And they've already done a lot of work right. there as far as raising the building. So it's going to be even more raising that they would have to do. Um, so they, you know, they expressed interest in still pursuing this. But yep. I, I think it's just a matter of keeping their options open. They they have until we actually close on the property to to back out. Uh, so at this stage of the game, they're not, you know, by exploring this and us exploring this, we're not committing committing to mm -hmm. anything. Um, but it is at best a several month process, and in reality, probably closer to eighteen months to two year Maybe process, if not Maybe. longer. Three was um, what I was thinking. Yeah. So. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at this point we're not doing any damage by pursuing this and, um, you know, seeing what comes out of this. So it's just those two properties? At this point, correct. There's, there was a third one, but they're clearly, um, that expressed interest, but they're clearly under the mobile home state process and totally different from this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, fairs is a mobile home, but because it's a land, it's home, on land, two and, and the and the state mobile home is capped at forty one thousand, and their property is a lot higher than that. So um, we're kind of exploring possible hybrid type project, but then that the state would take the mobile home, and then. The land would be fall under the the FEMA program, but that's very early. There, I haven't heard back from them yet on from the state yet on this. Yeah. I think I concur with keeping our options open and theirs too. Um, my my only concern about the fares is um, the the state mobile home program is moving a lot quicker than you know the FEMA. You know, like like Diane said, we're all talking two or three years on the FEMA process, whereas this may be done in a matter of a couple weeks. Um, 
it's why I want to keep right. that option open for them. Yeah. See what what we can get to them the quickest, but but still preserving everything that they need. So. Okay. That's great tour. I don't see any vote on that. No, no. not yet. Um, okay, if nothing else on FEMA, then uh, review of draft pilot policy. So, um, snooping around on other towns' websites, um, I came across the Barry City Council payment in lieu of tax policy. Um, that they adopted back in 2020. I thought it was kind of a, a neat little thing and and have a draft here uh, for uh, roughly based on the Barry City policy for uh, something we may want to consider in the future. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to read through it or not, I but I've also included I also included the Barry City policy mm -hmm. and a listing of um, I think just a couple years old of um, properties that are exempt in the town and what their worth is. Now some of these we do receive a pilot from already, you know, home health, home, home health and hospice, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, like Diana was saying earlier. But uh, you know the big one, the hospital. We don't receive anything from them at all regarding a uh, uh, a pilot, um, and they're looking at um, purchasing if they haven't already property on Vine Street for a daycare. Um, you know the waste management district was just in here, and that was one of the first things we said. Well, you're going to have to pay us a pilot if you mm -hmm. want to come. And they mm -hmm. were very agreeable to that. Uh, and we do have a lot of churches in the area. I know that the uh, career center is looking at a couple of different areas of property in town. I mean, it just seems to be that everything we do to gr to grow the grand list, mm -hmm. somebody comes in and takes more property off of it. So just trying to protect our. Uh, interest as, as much as possible and and we do still have to provide pro police service to them we still have to provide fire service to them um, and you know they, they use the roads and everything like that absolutely um, I think this is a this wise move is I mean it's technically not really enforceable on them because it, it's only a, a a policy uh, to have anything uh, with with the real teeth to it uh, would require an ordinance, and in order to do that, I think we would need a charter change to give us uh, state statute authority over properties that they've previously, by statute, exempted. So. <laughs> I'm not saying we shouldn't take that eventually take that further step, but I, I think that's going to be a much yeah. St much longer and much more involved uh, process and I think just puts our expect our expectations out in writing at, at the very front that mm -hmm. you know we do expect a, uh, a pilot from this so um, this is just a draft for tonight and uh, you know get you thinking about it and we can revisit it at a uh, future meeting sounds wonderful have you seen this Diana would you be able be able to maybe even add to this list, but mark the ones that do and don't participate in the pilot? That would be wonderful. Actually, what I'll do is I'll send you um, the pilot. All the ones are paying the pilot now, how much? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have it all in the spreadsheet. That's excellent. I think this is wonderful. Put it at the forefront. And yes, it may require, you know, substantial effort on all parts, but I think in the end it'll be very worthwhile and uh, straightforward. Anything else on the pilot policy? If not, I have uh, approval of uh, licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payable warrant 24G08 with checks 23438 to 23478 for payables in the amount of $354,290.95, payroll warrant 24-08 for payroll 
from September 24th to October 7th of 2023, paid on October 11th, 2023 in the amount of $59,250.59 and the ACH payment number four to VITA for Fisher Road Culvert Loan. I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, approval of minutes from uh, October 18th, 2023. Well, I had a, uh, what do you call that when you jump ahead in time? Uh, it should say October 2nd. Oh. <laughs> I make the motion 18th. to approve the yeah, regular absolutely. select board minutes of October 2nd, 2023 as, a, as presented to us this evening. I'll second. Any further discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Round table flow. I was just going to ask if we wanted to discuss as a board and uh, further elaborate on um, last week, Janet Richardson, last select board, she had mentioned about the roads and the concern and um, people that she knew and the condition of the roads. I wondered if we wanted to discuss that further or if you have any update from Tim as to whether some of those locations have been looked at and dealt with. Uh, Chase Road has been uh, completed. In fact, there's a note on Front Porch Forum this Wonderful. afternoon that That's good. people are happy with it. Uh, same with the um, Muzzy Road. I know that was another one that got a lot of interest. So they're, That's great. They're moving along on those. That's yeah. wonderful. Good to hear. That was it for me. Have you heard? Uh, and I think there was also um, Pain Turnpike North, and we're still waiting for the state to give their report for yeah. doing anything. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one's on hold awaiting the state. Okay, Joe. Um, I'm good, thank you. Door? Um, in the coming weeks, uh, I'll be bringing to you the uh, revisions to the animal control ordinance. Um, I know that's something that's been on my radar for years, even before last time I was on the uh, select board, um, needing to take a look at that ordinance and do some updates to it. So um, I'll have some uh, proposed uh, updates for you coming up. Uh, last week, the Economic Development Council met uh, to review the Gary Montpelier, which is the, the Comfort Inn uh, tax stabilization application. Um, that was approved by the Economic Development Council and will be coming um, before us at the November 6th meeting for approval. Um, and also keep in mind next meeting at the November 6th meeting will be the pre-town meeting on the five uh, bond vote initiatives uh, and that will be held at the school. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tour. Uh, executive session? Do you have a right away? You to oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, that's right. We do have Addison Drive. two locations on Addison Drive. This just came in this afternoon. 76 Addison Drive. And 94 Addison Drive. Um, it's consolidated. Um, using a contractor to install underground um, cabling uh, across the street in those two locations. Um, I don't believe Tim has had a chance to look at that yet, so I would recommend approving on the condition that uh, he approves it. So that's just they're going bore into the road? Right. Okay. And I'll make that motion. So moved. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. Um, 
And we do have an executive session for um, assistant treasure hiring in accordance with, uh, let me, yeah, one VSA 313A3. Then also for contracts, which uh, we I do, um, Move that uh, premature general public knowledge would place would clearly place the select board involved at a substantial disadvantage. And that is a motion. Second. You have a second? Second. All those in favor going into executive session for personnel and contract? Not quite yet. This is just the premature public knowledge. All those in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, now I move to go into executive session for assistant town treasuring in accordance with 1 VSA 313A3 in contracts. Uh, 1 VSA 313 little a, 1 big A. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. We're in executive session. I make the motion to exit executive session and re-enter our regularly scheduled select board meeting this evening. Second. Oh. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to adjourn. No action was taken in an executive session, and I will move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.